Good evening and welcome to the fate of Drakenheim. My name is Monty Martin and this is the Dungeon Dudes Weekly Dungeons and Dragons 5th Edition live stream campaign. I will be running our game tonight as Dungeon Master. And I'm Kelly McLaughlin playing Sebastian Crow, the half elf shadow sorcerer, and we're joined today by our good friends. Jill Denitis playing Veo Senya, the Tabaxi Gloomstalker Ranger. Bro. And Joe O'Gorman playing Pluto Jackson, the human battle master. Thank you for joining us once again. If you're just tuning in for the very first time, welcome. We are the Dungeon Dudes. Kelly and I post new videos every other Tuesday and every Thursday on our YouTube channel where we cover everything D&D, including advice for players and guides for GMs. So check us out at youtube.com slash Dungeon Dudes. You can also join us on Tuesday evenings when we record the campaign live on Twitch. Uh, currently, we are we are playing from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern Time at twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes. But you can also watch the video episodes of the show on YouTube. And uh, we also are available as an audio-only podcast, so you can check us out on your favorite podcasting platforms as well. And of course, if you are inspired by the gameplay of our wonderful campaign and want to run, run Drakenheim for yourself and your friends, be sure to hit up Drakenheim.com where you can get the PDF edition of Dungeons of Drakenheim from our successful Kickstarter campaign. It is currently available now, uh, so if you we did miss out on the original Kickstarter. I think you can still pre-order some of the bundles in the books, but if you want to get the PDF with all the amazing digital maps, some of which you will see in our game this evening, you can head on over to Drakenheim.com and check that out. With that, it is time to find out the fate of Drakenheim. Drakenheim is no more. The devastation which fell upon that accursed place left a kingdom in ruin. Now, horrors lurking in the haze grow ever more great and terrible. While simmering tensions between rival factions boil over into outright war, the power of monarchs, mages, and priests hangs in the balance. Six unlikely heroes join forces to confront the coming chaos. They shall decide once and for all. The fate of Drakenheim. Welcome back to Drakenheim. When last we left our heroes, Veo, Sebastian, and Paluto, they had just come from a meeting with our other heroes, Veo, uh, Rudy, Wilhelm, and Wrath, in a great deliberation to decide who will take the throne of Drakenheim. There it was decided that Wilhelm will indeed be seated upon the throne of Drakenheim and crowned as the new king of Westamar in agreement with the Caspians and Pluto uh, and House Jackson over, you know, the, the fate of, of the young George and how he'll fit into this whole picture. Nevertheless, one problem stands before our heroes, amongst many. Well, Wilhelm, Rudy, and Wrath join the Hooded Lanterns and Elias Drexel to retake the barracks and Shepherd's Gate to give a, a foothold in the city once more. There is a problem. For in order to attune Wilhelm to the crown and throne of Westamar, the magical artifacts that actually represent the symbols of royal power, our heroes will need the six seals of Westamar, of which they have five. Veo currently holds the Lord Commander's seal, as befits her current rank, and one Eldric Runeweaver currently holds the Inscrutable Staff, which is traditionally awarded to the Archmage of, of Drakenheim as a representative of the Amethyst Academy. Three of the other seal, uh, seals are currently held by our heroes and their allies, but unassigned with who will, will be. Spymaster Signet, the Steward's Badge, and the, um, ch uh, and the Chancellor's Signet. But a final seal, which is the Phylactery of St. Vitruvio, is held by Lucretia Matthias, who this was entrusted to her 
when all those things went went down all those many months ago in Castle Draken. And thus now our heroes in Emberwood Village are discussing the next step for they will need to they have decided that they don't want Lucretia Matthias to be holding this uh, seal or the position of High Flame Keeper of Drakenheim either. So now we Veo, Sebastian and Pluto have been charged with getting this back. How they will go about that though remains to be seen. For our heroes currently are in the Red Lion Hotel, a great manor that overlooks Emberwood Village, the former home of the Reeve of Emberwood Village converted into a hotel. There in a warm and cozy suite by a roaring fire, they chat with Eldrick Runeweaver. So he strokes his beard, adjusts his glasses, and regards the inscrutable staff that he holds. We have made many decisions of late, but I must admit, I am uncertain about this choice of stripping the High Flame Keeper's seal from Lucretia Matthias. Are you sure this is the right choice? I mean, it's... We can't really go forward with her as this position. It, it doesn't make sense anymore. Her, We know the truth about the meteor, and her way is not the way. I agree. Her way is not the way. But Lucretia Matthias has much influence amongst the common folk, and more and more pilgrims have been coming to Drakenheim. I worry what kind of inf that that she hasn't fully exercised the amount of influence that she truly has yet. One problem I see is that it, it might not actually be up to us. I mean, I know it's up to us to get the seal back, but if we have this Wilhelm character who's just strolled into town saying that he's uh, going to be king, and we've all apparently agreed to that. And, um... Well, I don't know what his relationship is with Lucretia Matthias, but he doesn't seem to want that. And on top of that, after what I saw in the heart of the crater, it doesn't make sense to me what what Lucretia Matthias is, is spreading. Her great visions, her great decisions, the way that she wants to change the world all came from seeing the same vision I saw. But the vision that I saw wasn't one that makes me jump to that conclusion, so I don't know. She seems... Let, let me put it this way. When people see something absolutely terrible, sometimes they make up a way that there might be good in it. They, they might come to a conclusion something to believe in to support mm. something that helps them get over what they saw I I think that Lucretia Matthias saw something horrible in that crater and this is her way of dealing with it Lucretia Matthias was powerful and influential amongst the faith, even before the meteor struck. She was known for performing great miracles, and there was a strong possibility uh, many years ago, decades ago, of course, that she would have been nominated as the Divine Matriarch, were it not for her proclivities towards grand proclamations. I, nonetheless, Pluto, what do you make of this situation? Before the, before the vision, she was an ally. And her place in this might still be to be seen, but her, her vision does not line up with ours. We see the same thing, but we take two different roads. And it's still hard to come to terms with. 
but I think we know what we have to do and we cannot wait. We cannot be a a artillery for other worlds in hopes that that's how we fix this problem. You saw it, Sebastian. You you know it the best of us all. But were it not for her, Lucretia Matthias, I'm not sure we would have survived Castle Draken. Her and I were there together through all this. She called upon an angel summoning a creature of that power oh yeah that angel actually saved my life in there um whatever that creature was in the throne room uh caused my brain to break and the angel brought me back from that so lucretia matthias has been a powerful ally and even if the path she's taking doesn't make sense to me. The fact is that there's a whole group of people that jammed this dangerous rock into their chest and are okay. And the other truth of the matter is that it's only a matter of time. The followers of the Falling Fire have objected to prospecting delirium. If the Academy is going to utilize this resource, well, they believe that it is sacred, and they believe that what we do with it, transforming it into useful things, is a debased defilement of some sort of divine stone sent for a sacred purpose. They don't use delirium the way we do, they don't try to make magical items with it. They don't try to harness its power in this way. They use it for their ritual and nothing else. And there are others amongst the Academy that have pointed out this. We have had instances where even our mercenaries that we've hired for prospecting or our own surveyors have had problems with the followers of the Falling Fire in the ruins. It hasn't been a major issue, but it has been something that has come up before. Working with Lucretia Matthias might work in the short term, but for the goals of the Academy, it is untenable. Eldrick, you were in that meeting with me, with the Directorate. Um, the goals of the Academy are confusing right now. The, the Directorate is intimidating. Uh, the other problem is... Yeah, we might grab this thing from Lucretia Matthias, but then who does it go to? If it goes to the Silver Order, guess what? They're going to want to destroy Delirium. Sebastian. I mean, sorry, Veo, go ahead. We, we, we both saw that vision as well. We know that Delirium can't stay if we want to have anything to do with this world surviving past hundreds of thousands of years it may not you know infect the whole world in our lifetime but we may not want it to to you know blow up other worlds we, we want to create a future of, of this place so unfortunately Eldrick we may not be able to keep all the delirium either so well, there's one thing that I can trust in, is that the Directorate has no interest in dying. And certainly, they would rather this world stay one piece than it be destroyed. They live on it, after all. Uh, do they? I mean, we met them on the moon, didn't we? Yeah. Uh... <laughs> y y yes, but... I, I know it's difficult to understand when, when you when you are on the world, but you do understand that the, the, the Earth is a globe and the moon is a satellite that orbits it. It's not like we live on a flat plane underneath some sort of glass dome. Yeah, I knew that. I, 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 that was, that was okay. in my lessons, I'm pretty sure. I'm um, pretty sure. <laughs> But so so you understand that if if the the earth is destroyed that the moon would not have long to last either. Yeah, but uh you know, if they're building bases on the moon, can the directorate build 
bases on other pl- like I don't know, Eldrick. Do you know? Have you talked to the maybe? Director? Maybe we just need to. Do they have bases on other planets? Walk us through the vision again. You know, we need to all get on the same page. You again? Yeah. Just for. All right. There was a the planet. Timeline straight. There was a planet, and a meteor hit it, mm-hmm. and it got really, really sick, and it started to spread. And everybody on the planet was bickering, and then the planet blew up, and it sent delirium meteors all over the place. And one of them sailed through the cosmos and hit Drakenheim, and the process started again. And Lucretia Matthias, she she aims to cleanse this delirium rid it of its awful power and continue the process but with that that is a golden delirium almost the antidote right sending the antidote out into whatever is beyond where we are but but what proof do we have that it's an antidote like can it solve anything we uh, eldrick have we done any tests on golden delirium what are does it do anything or is it just we Pretty. have precious few samples of this golden delirium. And from everything that we've been able to determine, it is mostly inert. Yeah, the It is safe to handle barehanded. And once it is formed, the golden delirium contains the soul of the person who the shard was embedded in. Okay. So let's say that we throw all the souls of the world into the crater filled with golden delirium. Does that fix delirium? I mean, do we have any proof of that? Sebastian, the energy of a soul, magically speaking, is extreme. And so, in theory, a delirium crystal holding a mortal soul would be individually unfathomably powerful. We have run experiments in the Academy where we have successfully bound the spirits of extraplanar creatures to delirium crystals. Uh, It's a difficult process, but... Uh, For example, we've been able to make flaming weapons by embedding a delirium shard into the pommel of a sword and binding a fire elemental to it. It's incredibly effective for this purpose, but to actually bind a soul to delirium, a mortal soul, that's something that we haven't been able to do. And so clearly, Lucretia Matthias has discovered a way to do this. Unfortunately, whatever this process is that she utilizes, it renders that locked in place. There is no way that we have discovered thus far to actually access the vast amount of power that would be there. In theory, a delirium shard that was holding a mortal soul could work unfathomable types of magic. But the golden delirium that we have samples of is completely inaccessible to the magic that we know and understand. And all this talk about mortal souls and their power makes me kind of wish my mother hadn't sold my soul when I was born. It's not to say that there aren't ways of binding mortal souls. It's just that uh, under the Edicts of Lumen, we are not supposed to teach that magic to anybody. So does that mean what Lucretia Matthias is doing is against the Edicts of Lumen? You must understand, the Edicts of Lumen do not forbid any form of magic. They merely stipulate that the Amethyst Academy cannot teach certain types of magic except under very specific circumstances. This means that there are certain spells that are only known to the Directorate, for instance. Spells that bind mortal souls being amongst them. Yeah, the director has a lot of secrets. 
either way, we still don't have any proof that Lucretia Matthias's plan has anything to back it up. Yeah, she has ways to infuse souls into delirium, but her plan is to let the world be destroyed and hope that that saves other worlds. And I don't know, I'm willing to agree with these newcomers that we got to focus on saving this world. I agree. It may be, and it still is the case, that delirium is a phenomenally powerful resource, one that we should not squander. And that Lucretia Matthias, her plan, to me, seems simply insane. Well, then I guess uh, Pluto, Veo, uh, Pluto. We, we, we may we... need to... Lucretia is... She's out there. Hmm. But she is a former ally. And yes. I would call her a friend. She was pivotal in the throne room. She carries the phylactery. She is very resourceful. And she has access to this magic that hmm. seems beyond even you two. And you're like the magic people that I know. So to cut her out of this conversation may be unwise. I'm it I don't may disagree. be worth You know, if if her plan in its lowest form is to turn all the delirium gold and weight then what does she have to lose if we attempt to stop the delirium another way and if it fails she can still pursue her goal it may be possible to bargain with her under that under those circumstances but she might want to extract some sort of guarantee from you this also means, Pluto, that uh, we probably shouldn't tell her that we're planning to maybe give the Seal of Drakenheim to the Silver Order, who want to destroy Delirium, which directly opposes her beliefs. Oh. So I think the key here is that as her friend, we should blatantly lie to her. That doesn't track. It, uh, it's I mean, why has us. that done us wrong before? It's what's the worst that could happen? No, not yet, not yet. We're too early, <laughs> too early in this. You know, Pluto, what? Pluto, Pluto. I'm all, all, I'm along the same lines as you. She's been our friend. She's been our ally. She's helped us, but we have need for the seal, mm. and we need to get it from her. That doesn't mean we can't treat her with respect even though she's a little bit crazy. Um, but she has helped us and she has been respectful towards us. So there's a balance here. I think we need to. Yeah, we also have to be out. careful about throwing around the, the word crazy because Sebastian, mm. you go through like 70 towels a mm. week. We're not discussing how many towels I eat. <laughs> We're discussing the You're spitting You actually right have hairballs. You, you have a hairball problem. Pl Pluto, I haven't ate a towel in at least... 24 hours. That's not... My point is, is that she may be useful. And as Sebastian mm. said, she, we do not have a replacement to wield the phylactery. We might. Mm. Oh, well... It depends. Yes. But if it's Saying, not... What? What? But at least then the ch decision is in our hands. True. Who do you think our new king might choose? Does he have any candidates? I mean, from that meeting, it sounded like he maybe wanted to use it as a peace offering to the Silver Order. I, mm -hmm. I don't quite know who he knows on the Silver Order, but I mean... A peace offering might be nice. They've kind of wanted Pluto's head ever since he uh, 
the whole Ignatius incident. What, they yeah. challenged him and then he won. I don't know. They're yeah, just being sore losers at this point. <laughs> they were being sore losers, and apparently that was enough to uh, decide that they were going to march on Drakenheim. And, um, you know, I don't look very good. There might have been an incident involving some fire. I might have oh. said some things, might have misused Flame Be With You. Look, Pluto we might have get stuff people. done. And sometimes, you know, we step on the wrong people's toes. The point is, is that I believe that the, that the four of us sitting at this table have Drakenheim's best interest at heart. Always. And if we operate under that condition, what's the worst that could happen? Very well. Thank you. Pluto! Well, then... I just have to embrace it at this point. <laughs> Uh, Sebastian like puts his arm around Pluto and is just like, listen. I'm coming around. I'm coming around. I'm. Uh, I get Pluto, it. I get it. I get it. You're so cool, and you've always been so cool. And we're the three of us. And I grab Veo and I pull her into. I'm like, mm. the three of us have done so many cool things. And along the way, we've helped Drakenheim. We maybe have caused some more problems, but mostly we've helped, and we're gonna keep helping. Right, Aldric. We we do carry one <sighs> option, the perfect sphere of delirium, mm. which we left back at the camp. Yeah, is somebody watching that, Aldric? <laughs> it um, has already been safely transported to the academy tower. Oh no, we didn't. Want we that, don't have did that we? anymore. We <laughs> lost that as a bargaining chip. Yeah, uh, where's my mirror, by the way? Is that in the same place? Like, I never saw my mirror again. It is also at the Academy Tower. Right. It is your get... you, It is yours to access, if you so wish. The... Well, that's a f the first I've heard of that, so yes. But later. This... We need the pristine geode. We need it. But there are other things that we may be able to offer her in exchange. Perhaps some sort of guarantee, at least in the time being, of peace or armistice. Perhaps something else tangible. <sighs> Perhaps access to the cathedral or some sort of defenses there or e even the dragon bones, whatever she wants. We may... I, I I feel deep down that Lucretia means the best. And although her her approach is wild to us, some might say the same about our approach. Like the way we befriended that rat that ended up Doing all those horrible things that we try not to really the rat think about. That we, we try to like power of. through, and we just try to like what, like sweep under the rug. Like we <laughs> we did all that. So as much as we need to, we must see it from her point of view, and and there may be space for us to continue to work together. Hmm. I'm not going to mince words here. You might not need to bargain with her. You just need to get it from her. You don't oh. need to kill her. If you don't think that, and there's reason why that might not be necessary. Uh, hopefully. Or work. But, with respect, the three of you are a bull in a china shop. Thank you. For appreciating that. A, a, use, a euphemism that probably doesn't even make sense in the context. Uh, um, uh, uh, perhaps a, a bull in a glassmaker's workshop. Um, I kill trolls. And... If you have to take it from her hands to bring it back, then so be it. Her cold, dead hands. Now, because uh. she's probably attuned to this item, can she can't summon it back. Can she? Does she have that magic? Well, I will, if you bring it back to me as quickly as possible, I will purge whatever spells might be upon it. 
So what you're Athena saying? Did that to us, didn't? You? Normally, I would just chop off her hands. Just, I'm just trying. But, but if this is what it's coming down to, again, Pluto. I only say that if you cannot get her to give it up willingly. Pluto, there's one thing I know you're good at. Actually, there's a lot of things I know you're good at. You're thank you. I have quite at... a long list. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but okay, one thing that's important right now. In the past, whenever there is a nerd who has homework. In this case, the nerd is a religious nerd, and the homework is an item that we need to obtain from them. So I want you to beat up a nerd and take their homework. When have we ever done that? We, I, I feel like that. The, the, literally the two times we've been set up to do it, we just have not done that. Yeah, we really, yeah. <laughs> The Ew, third time's the charm, but like, I'm also, not really. I'm also We're, just coming around to this whole two? science thing. Like, I'm really starting to embrace it. You embrace science, I, or at least, at least, some kind of working theory about the world. Because Pluto, you've grown so much. I'm so proud of you. It's so confusing. I just wish someone would tell me what to kill. <laughs> so less decisions. Don't worry, we'll get there, buddy. All right. Do you need any other resources before you set out for the city? Oh, uh, yes. Um, some aqua Virgo would be great because I'm pretty sure where she's at is very hazy. Okay. Yep. Um, with basically any of you, if you don't have a um a dose of aqua Virgo, any mission that you undertake, you can start off with one dose. Nice. Cool. I open up my bag of holding and start rifling around, and I'm just like, guys, I haven't looked in here in a while. There's there are so many things in this bag of holding. I have like eight scrolls. I have two potions of Aqua Expergo already. Wow. I have eight potions of Aqua Delirium in here, just rattling around. I shake the bag, and you hear like a bunch. <laughs> of careful with that. <laughs> <laughs> you hear like sh a shelf fall over and like a crash. Oop. Oop. Um. I, what was I gonna say? Uh, oh, our our rings. Um, we need to make sure those are all stocked up too. Right. Um, I, I have a couple shields and a thunder step in my ring. I just took five shields. <laughs> if uh, with the haste of Sebastian and the Zephyr strike of Veo. My ring is complete. Pluto, are you like getting into this whole going fast thing? Is that a new? I gotta go faster. Is that, is that why right. you put an arrow on your helmet? <laughs> so fast. Well, that's how they know where to punch, where to aim. Yeah. yeah. Are you so already to, know where to punch me? Are you already to set out then, or do you need anything else? I think we're good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Best of luck. Thank you. We'll do you our best, too. as yes. we usually do. Eldrick nods, and um, he says, I will be returning to the Academy Tower from here. I will check in with... Uh, I'll be checking in with River, and we'll see what other news we can find out from, uh, uh, from after our other forces secure the Hooded Lantern's barracks. Okay. Sounds good. With that, Eldrick takes his leave, and the three of you head out from the Red Lion Hotel towards Drakenheim. What route Ooh. do you want to take? Or is there any other last minute things that you want to do before you... Yes, I want to use the Lord Commander Seal to uh, issue a bellowing command. Ooh. <laughs> so that way, um, and the command is, let's have some fun! Maybe beating up a nerd for their homework, but in general, let's do our best. So always fail, always so inspirational. Okay. So inspired. What is the I what is the effect of the Lord Commander Seal? Uh, so we each gain twenty temporary hit points. While you have these hit points, uh, we gain advantage on attack rolls and saving throws, and we can't use it again until the next dawn. Nice. So use them wisely. Gentle Advantage plan. on attack rolls and saving throws. Nice. Yes. 
Now, Damn, so thank you, Veo. You are approaching the city from uh, from the south. So you're coming in towards Emberwood Village. Uh, ooh, we are very zoomed in there. Wow. Zoom way out. <laughs> Not that much, though. Okay. So, um, hopefully that's a bit of a better view. So you're, com- you're looking over in this area of the city here, right? So um, if you're coming into Drakenheim uh, to get to the chapel, um, which is along the crater's edge, right? Um, you can either brave it by, if, if your destination is the crater, you don't even need to pass through Champion's Gate. You know that Lucretia Matthias has been hanging out at the at the chapel of St. Gratia, uh, and that was the last place that you spoke with her, in fact. Uh, she does also often hang out at uh, St. Saint, Saint, um, Saint Selena's Monastery, uh, although given, um, given the circumstances um most recently you've been encountering are here so can we just skip the gate and kind of cut through the uh danger zone of the spokes and since your destination is the crater yes right um normally passing through that area is pretty deadly but since that's where you're trying to go (laughs) there's not much reason to actually take the gate yeah, there's a big old scar there as well that we're going to pass by. Yeah. And should we um, take our Aquax Burgo? How long is it going to again? I choose to. Probably. Because we're going really close. I'm going to drink. We're all going to drink our Aquax Burgo. Blug. Okay. I feel invincible. No. I feel weird. Alrighty. You travel across the dusty Champion's Way, uh, the old road that leads from Emberwood Village towards the city of Drakenheim. Um, It is early in the day, and wet mist hangs across the lands uh, surrounding the city, um, clinging thick onto your clothing and basically making everything slightly damp. As you approach closer to the outskirts of the city, through the dilapidated buildings of Champion's Way, um, you see um, you see that the streets right now are mostly deserted. Um, perhaps maybe earlier in the day, um, Veo, you can see that there's signs that perhaps a few hours ago, perha- um, a group of pilgrims of the Falling Fire might have passed this way towards Champion's Gate. But you're able, but uh, you're immediately going to pull the group on the back roads uh, t- through the spokes towards um, the crater. Now, the south ward of Drakenheim was its beating industrial heart. Of, uh, um, and so the inner part of the south ward before it was annihilated was known for having many workshops and much industry and the spokes themselves like the spokes of a wheel served the industry of the south ward um, all along here are um, all through the streets that you pass through are old flop houses and tenement buildings where workers would live um, in some of the most squalid conditions in Drakenheim. There are numerous areas of warehouses um, and um, lower workshops and mills and other um, other facilities that are all kind of spread out along, along the spokes. Um, in its heyday, it was a dusty, sooty, smelly part of the city. And even now, the smells uh, of the city linger, um, although they are twinged with that that ozone-like scent of delirium. For along here is the scar, which is a long path, uh, almost a trench, that was dug across uh, the area. Um, where the a piece of the wall and a piece of the meteor were sent flunging out, kind of dragging this earthen trench that is one of the richest deposits of delirium outside the city the city walls. Um, you've heard rumors that there is actually an outpost of uh, dwarven prospectors uh, that is taken up in an old smithy nearby here. Um, but uh, as you pass through the area, um, you uh, you can hear the distant sounds of a thunderous 
of thunderous gunfire, perhaps, uh, of the of their defensive emplacement. But you move through towards the the city uh, proper and towards the crater. Is there anything else you'd like to do as you make this journey? Uh, how are you guys feeling? I, I feel like I want to check in with Veo. No, this is our first time being actually alone, the three of us, in a while. Uh, do you do you mind if I take a minute to check in? Mm-hmm. Veo, Pluto, what's up? We uh, what do you think of? Well, okay, what's up? <laughs> what's up, guys? Uh, here we are walking back into the city. What do you guys think of these three other hooligans that uh, that came marching in here? This new king, and uh, <laughs> you called them hooligans. So I already know your feelings. Well, uh, no, the, are we the hooligans? <laughs> no, it seems cool. It seems cool. But I just like well, Veo, um, Pluto, Pluto. You you seem to know this Wilhelm guy. What's up there? He is a distant friend. Um, he seems honorable. Um, he, I, I can read people. Um, yeah, I have a, I have a pretty good idea. Um, and I, and I do trust that he is willing to do what is right in this moment to get what needs to be done and then relinquish, relinquish the throne. He seems to be some kind of wanderer. He doesn't seem to want this royal pageantry. And if he can hold the throne until George is ready, then perfect. And it seems to move the agenda forward. And you think we can trust him? Yes. The That weird mage guy, though. Oh, gosh. I don't yeah, okay. know. Yeah, I, he was... He's a bit off. He was really excited that I <laughs> looked yeah, like a big cat. I, I've, kind of I've, threw me a bit. I've come across this guy before. It's it's River's weird brother. Um, oh, yeah, and uh, yeah, that's right. They don't they don't really. She didn't talk about him that much, but like occasionally, I got to meet him, and every single time, it was awkward. <laughs> it's the. He won't shut up about his cat. I yeah. don't even know if he actually casts real spells. I, he's he's a mess. I, I don't, like, I got kicked out of the Academy. But I'm pretty sure he tried in the Academy, and they were just like, eh, go wander off somewhere and pretend you're a mage. Um, so really weird that he's now back as, like, the right hand of the 2B king. What? I don't know. This guy's worming his way into places. It just seems to yeah. pop up at the most inopportune times. And and this Rudy character, I don't know. I've she seems pretty scary. She's big a bit fan. scary, right? <laughs> big fan. You can I can see a lot of blood, a lot of dry blood on those axes. You know, yeah, Doing is that some good? Work. Like sturdy. I get the impression she's very sturdy. <laughs> we have yeah, like you, Pluto. Scary. Yeah, we have well, a butcher well, and a maniac on either side of this supposed claimed king. Uh, I'm excited by the idea of having more help, and they seem like they can stand up in a fight. But I, I just might aren't want they to keep doing our eyes something on, on the northwest bank? Yeah, you you know that they're yeah. on a mission right now. Yeah. to to they're helping out, taking the barracks. Yeah. Back. Yeah. Yeah, How do you feel about that? Like, they didn't ask you to take the Hooded Lantern's barracks back. You're the Lord Commander. And, I mean, Wilhelm's going to have a say in that going forward. I mean, I think I can be of more use where I'm at. And if the other group, Rudy and Wrath and Wilhelm, want to take that on, listen, if it helps the soldiers, if it helps the Hooded Lanterns, I'm all for it. I just want the men and women under my charge to be safe. And if that's what that means, then great. I think Wilhelm is really, he seems honorable. He seems like a really good guy. Yeah, a little bit, not the best talker, you know, needs to work on his speeches. Yeah, um, I really stumbled through his words. But, uh, 
I what I don't know if he has the guts to do what needs to be done. All I'm saying is that him making a play with this red huntsman and this crazy mage and them going to reclaim the barracks, they could use that against you being Lord Commander, and I'm I'm, I'm just worried. I'm just worried about what their plays are here. I'm worried if they have another agenda, but mm. we'll see. Maybe we talk with them more when we get back. Who would River pick between you and her brother? Oh, me. Yeah? I'm her best friend, I think. I was. Uh-oh, I didn't mean to so doubt. I simply Which? as a... <laughs> <laughs> Confidence. Confidence, Sebastian. Confidence is key. Look, the this feels all too familiar. Walking back into the city with you two. Mm-hmm. But I feel safe. Eh, what's the worst I, that could happen, right? Well, you can all roll me a d6. <laughs> a two. Four. Feel... Four. Okay. You proceed into the city towards the, where the shattered walls of Drakenheim once stood, across the ruin and rubble, and towards the crater's edge. As you step into the deep haze and feel it wash over your bodies, you can each give me a constitution saving throw. With advantage. Thank you, Vale. You're welcome. Twelve. Twenty-one. Uh, does a seventeen. Uh, Vale, you actually fail that save. <laughs> uh, so, Vale, you're, uh, uh, unless you want to use your Aqua Expergo now, uh, this is going to be a contamination level. Yes. Okay. You get three, right? Yeah, you get three Aqua Expergo yeah. saves. A 12 with advantage. Vale. Yeah. It was either yeah. that or five, so. <laughs> yeah. Take the twelve. <laughs> Okay. With that, you proceed deeper in towards the crater's edge, towards where the chapel of Saint uh, Saint Gresha uh, is uh, lies along the crater's edge. Now, the site of the chapel, now that you've navigated there several times through the thick mist of the deep haze, um, you can find your way through what waypoints you recall. Um, The chapel itself teeters literally on the edge of the crater, almost as if it could sink into it at any moment. But little remains of it, for the the chapel's entire ceiling has been blown off, and most of the brickwork, in fact, has been utterly annihilated. But instead, it floats in midair, slowly coming together and falling apart. The stained glass windows that once decorated, um, the glass shards still floating in the air, defying gravity, still occasionally coming together to form grotesque shapes that are mockeries of the beautiful uh, scenes of divine grace that they once pictured. Several of the statues outside St. Gresha depict the saints and angels, and many of them are warped and charred beyond all recognition. But nonetheless, the core of the circular chapel still stands, and there is a great brazier of purple-red scarlet flame that illuminates almost like a beacon in the midst of the haze. As you approach um, you, the, the chapel, you can see the guardians that stood here, um, that you've run into several times. They are knights of the, devoted to the sacred flame. They are of an order that is not the same as the silver order. Um, the, the half remembered tales that you've mentioned, the the emblazons of the of their shields. Um, apparently, this might have been an order known as the Twilight Sentinels, um, that was a local to Drakenheim. Um, but and they still have these emblazoned on the shields that they carry. Their helms are enclosed over them, and they wear half plate armor with thick wrappings over their bodies. You do not see their faces nor flesh. Th- 
they seem welcoming. Mm-hmm. They hold um, their shields and swords at rest, but on, on in, in sort of a sentinel pose, right? So, like, their shield is strapped to their arms, their sword is held between them, uh, held up against their, their chests. Um, and they... But as you approach, there's the, the stairs that lead up into the chapel proper. Um, and I guess I can show you the the map here. In case it's relevant, so uh, they're unmoving, right? Um, they they are stoically still. Um, the 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 two watchers and a third figure, um, garbed in much more ornate armor, comes down the stairs. Um, and as the third figure comes down the stairs, the two part ways, and the the third figure says, uh, cries out in a kind of ethereal tone, You three, it is as Lucretia Matthias has foretold. You come again. Do you come? At least least she knew we were coming. (laughs) Ah, it is as we foretold. You... Walking out here and greeting us. Don't worry, guys. I can play this game, too. (laughs) This is a sacred place. Lucretia Matthias has told me that you may wish to do harm to her. That's a bold statement. We don't want to do harm to her. That is not the intention. Very well. You have Ignatius with you, yes? Ignatius has led me into the darkest places and shone, and, and shone brightly, sh- shined brightly. <laughs> good, 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 mm. good recovery. Very well. I am satisfied. Know, though, that we are watching. You know that we're watching. Hey, don't antagonize. No, I'm just, I want, we're on even ground here. I'm trying to show a dominance. I feel like you're trying to shake the trees already. No, I'm just trying to make sure that we don't lose a foothold here, okay, Pluto? (laughs) With that, the sentinels step aside and allow you to head up the stairs into the chapel. As I walk by, I give them the... The eyes. As you come up the, st- the set of stairs to where the chapel hangs on the precipice, you can see that there is a great brazier of the sacred flame burning um, in, in a- a- atop a marble dais. The coals of this brazier are glimmering delirium crystals. And Lucretia Matthias stands there tending the brazier. Um, it, as, as a flame keeper often does, usually anointing it with sacred oils. Um, and she has assembled uh, there, a lantern and several candles are all lit around and several shards of golden delirium are arrayed uh, about. And she takes one of the golden shards uh, and uh, after speaking a prayer to it, she passes it to one of the other sentinel, Twilight Sentinel Knights who takes it and behind her there is a staircase um, and the Twilight Sentinel takes the shard down to the staircase, ostensibly likely to a, a set of crypts, perhaps. Uh, Lucretia Matthias, how are you? You are welcome here to this place. I hope you are well. Do I you know why we're here. I do not believe that you are here to kill me. If that's what it comes to. It's a good to. start. Yeah. 
No, that is not the intention. I have heard and seen that another Von Kessel has been found. Yeah. Like an actual Von Kessel. George is an actual Von Kessel. I still yeah. plan to honor <laughs> what I said. I hope he plans to honor it as well. You know he promised to take the sacrament when he comes of age. Yep. Yeah, I think he is uh he is nervous as as someone his age is, although I believe the duties of the crown also require a leap of faith. And that leads us to you. Very well. Well, if you have come here to invite me to attend a coronation ceremony, is that what you have come here to do? Actually, um, so this new Von Kessel guy showing up, there's a lot of logistics that we need to sort out. And he is going to be gathering all of the Drakenheim seals and distributing them for the coronation. Uh, and that's going to be something he's going to be doing because he's he's a Von Kessel, you know, new king and all. Uh, so this is part of the whole thing is the new king gets to elect its uh, small council. Hmm. So uh we're gonna need to gather all the seals so that he can do this sort of ceremony we'd love you to be there i i look over at pluto and veo as i say that Are you inviting me i don't know i, I think just you just kinda... did well i mean <clears throat> we've been instructed by this prince, future king, whatever you'd like to call him, um, to collect the seals. And that includes the one in your possession. Lucretia Matthias, we humbly ask for the phylactery. She, from her, Lucretia Matthias herself is a short, waifish woman in her 90s. Um, she wears a shawl and plain penitent robes and uh, from a, you can see that on a, a where, that she wears a rope belt and upon it she has had the, the phylactery of St. Vitruvio. The only other adornment she carries on her person is a amulet that holds a golden delirium crystal around it beneath her shawls though you can see the glow of the purple delirium crystal that is embedded in her own chest she pulls forth the phylactery of saint vitruvio and speaks carefully by tradition and law the phylact the the phylactery of saint vitruvio is carried by the High Flamekeeper of Drakenheim, a position that is chosen by the Divine Matriarch. And do you think the Divine Matriarch is going to choose you? No. I think that the Divine Matriarch has been refuses to see the light and the truth. Well then, Lucretia, I've got great news. Uh, this Von Kessel, he's, uh, he's going to try to stick to the book, I think, which means you could always plead your case to the matriarch, maybe why you might be the right candidate to hold this 
position for Drakenheim, but the the fact is, like, you know, our our hands are tied in this. We this he he needs the he needs all the seals of Drakenheim to be crowned king, and we need to crown a king. I see no shackles around your wrists. I see no rope holding your hands together. Let go speech. of those things that bind you. You have seen the truth of what will happen to our world, Sebastian. You've yeah. seen it with your own eyes. Yeah, it was bad. The three of you have glimpsed the delirium heart, and you know what is coming. The old ways have served us well. They have taught us and guided us through darkness towards the light. But we must turn towards a new dawn, a new and glorious age. There is still a time where heroes will be needed for a very long night awaits us. But it is one of a divine purpose. You must see that, surely. Lucretia, we may not be bound by rope and chain, but we are still bound by duty. And with this future king, we are bound to do what he what he asks. Uh, Pluto has an offer. It, you, you said something earlier. There was something you said earlier. Like, what if... And, and Eldrick, he said, yeah, that sounds good. I What was it? I for, No? Um, I... We literally made a plan, and I always forget <laughs> what it is. Uh, we are willing to offer you... Pluto? Well, oh, I... I don't... I don't think we did. I don't think oh, we no. settled. What... What I... Let go of these lies that grip your soul. These old ways that bind you. There is a new path, and it has always been before you. We can set foot upon it. I will walk with you, and we do not need to fear the end. Mm. Mm-hmm. Lucretia Matthias said, We. You saved us. Yes. You saved Sebastian, and you. Because I see great things for you. I see before me a noble knight astride in the ancient relics of St. Vitruvio commanding the might of the ancient dragon Argonath to lead our faithful. You could take up that call, Paluto, that you could be that knight that leads us through that night. Veo, you too could have this sacred purpose, and Sebastian, you need not linger in shadows. All of you a great light burns in all of your hearts. This need not be your path. We we put so much. They 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 did not believe. They did not believe in you. They did not believe in what you could do. The academy is perplexed by the miracles you create. And even though they fear you, or they did, we put our faith in you and we stopped. We stopped whatever was in that throne room in its tracks. We did it together. And we have seen this vision. We have we have seen what is coming. 
and I don't ask. I'm not. I'm not asking for the flak tree. I'm asking for you to trust us, like we trusted you. To put your faith back in us, because we m- may not know what's coming, but this is this is that that truth you see. This is that path. So I kind of am asking for the phylactery, but I'm I'm not asking for the phylactery. I'm asking you to put your faith in Dragon Force. Give me a persuasion check. <laughs> the least persuasive, or how is your persuasion, Pluto? I guess you're just about to find out. It's a 14. Okay. Lucretia Matthias nods as you speak, but frowns. I need to see a demonstration of your faith, for I have faith in the flame. First and foremost. And if it shows me to have faith in you, then I will follow that faith. I would give you the phylactery of Saint Vitruvio if you took the sacrament right now, all three of you. Um, Lucretia Look at his arms. I grab Sebastian. He is frail and bony. The the his his soul fragment would pierce right through him and he would die. He would collapse in a heap. Uh, and, look, 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 look. and and Veo just she just eats delirium. This doesn't even affect her. Don't. But I Pluto Jackson will take no. the sacrament alone give me a persuasion check <laughs> oh, son of a junk <laughs> do I get advantage on persuasion checks because of the Lord commander's seal no it's yeah. not no, is it skill checks uh, no, I, I it's don't think, yeah. and saving throws <laughs> saving throws that's it sorry <laughs> I used lucky to get a 15. I am impressed by your offer, but I need to see it done by all three of you, if I'm to do this. That said, perhaps you can offer me something as a show of faith on your own, Pluto. If you will lay the blade Ignatius at my feet, and leave it here. I will give you the phylactery of Saint Vitruvio. You know, Lucretia, I got a question about this whole thing. So we came here to let you know, you know about this new king that's coming to town. We need to put somebody on the throne because when we do, that person can make decisions that help all of us and help Drakenheim. You want Drakenheim to stick around. You don't want it to be infested with monsters. We don't want it to be infested with monsters. We want a king who's going to make good decisions. This Von Kessel guy seems all right. I care Why not is for the for the the tribulations of the the and politics of this royalty. If we had all the relics of Saint Vitruvio, the Blade Ignatius the phylactery and the others, the rest, we, I know that I could resurrect the ancient dragon Argonath. Mm-hmm. And Argonath would protect this city, would protect our pilgrims. And what does that mean exactly? Does that mean um, when the academy tries to excavate delirium, you burn them down with a dragon? Does that mean that when the Silver Order marches on the city, you're going to 
burn them all down, or what I'm hearing is we might have an option for a peaceful resolution. And we came here to ask for the phylactery politely and give you a decent reason why you might still have a part in this. You might be able to give us the phylactery and have your say and, you know, talk to the new mm. king and see how that goes. But what I'm hearing is no. I'm not hearing a... It's a no unless you do these things for me. But what about the good of everybody? What about maybe not trying to kill an Illyrian army, but maybe gaining peace with an Illyrian army? Sebastian... In only a short time, armies, kingdoms, rulers, they will not be enough to hold back the haze. Its advance is inexorable and inevitable. What will happen will happen regardless of all the might of men and mages. This world is doomed, but in its doom and death, we can shine such a light. See, that's where you and I disagree. Until we exhaust every single option, I am not gonna give up trying to save this world. What you're doing is surrendering Surrendering to a fate which I don't think this world deserves. And it's not ready for. It's not done fighting. We're not done fighting for this world. And I will give every last breath in my body to keep fighting to save it. I admire that. I do. Give me a persuasion check, Thea. Nineteen. You may rage and rage and rage against the dying of the light. You may fight with every breath you have against the shadows that cross our world. And that may be the end, and that may be how you go. I, so long as I am not persecuted, so long as me and my followers are allowed to do our holy purpose, I see no reason why you cannot flail uselessly against a fate that was decided long ago. And Lucretia... But with that in mind, I still see no reason why I should... Why in that process you should potentially endanger the work that I am trying to do here. The holy mission I have set myself upon, and all the other followers of the Falling Fire. If I am to give you the phylactery of Saint Vitruvio, and I am willing to do so, there must be something beyond words that you can offer. How about? For your words have been empty before. How about we go get you the bones of the dragon? Argonoth. If you he sleeps. provide me the bones of Argonoth sleep beneath the cathedral of St. Vitruvio, and there they should remain. But if you were to provide me with the other seals... Uh, the other relics of Saint Vitruvio. I could see that in, as, an, as an exchange. 
I already possess two of them. But there are two more that I do know where they are, but they are out of my grasp. I would accept any two of the other relics. Ignatius and one other, or the other two that are still missing. If you would bring them to me, I would give you the phylactery. Uh, Any one of them. And either one in Ignatius or the two that are missing, and then that would mean the Pluto gets to keep Ignatius? Yes. I, for the time being. Oh, how hard that can, can I, that be? That Where are they? I sort of, uh, you know, Ignatius kind of works for me. We're like a team. Do you know where they are, and, and will you tell us what they are? I believe that the shield of St. Vitruvio is still lost in Castle Draken. Hmm. Of course. Some months ago, I divined that the scepter of St. Vitruvio lied, to, was laid to rest in the chapel of St. Brenna which is on the southern side of the city. I sent some of my loyal followers there to retrieve it. Unfortunately, when they went, there were knights from the Silver Order and a band of brigands sent by some working with two brothers working with some megalomaniacal gnomish criminal mastermind and they stole the scepter of saint vitruvio and i believe they sold it to the queen of thieves mm -hmm. great so one's in castle drac and the other one is in the hands of the queen of thieves um <sighs> Cool. Possible, but I think if that is what you wish, if that is other than taking the sacrament, the only way we can show you that we mean what we say, then it's the path we have to take. How are we going to get a seal from the Queen of Thieves? Or a, a relic. We don't even know where her base of operations is anymore. She, she, we filled her old base with rats. She's operating out of somewhere else now, I would assume. And that relic could be anywhere in the world. Look, we don't need both. With Ignatius... And one of the relics, we can perform the trade. But then you have to give up that awesome... I mean, Pluto, I'm not going to mince words here. You literally killed some people so you could keep that sword. Oh, yeah. But... Ignatius isn't mine it is he, he gets he's mad. on loan yeah he's he gets mad at me sometimes and the thing is is that ignatius would want this if it came down to it but i think we should start in castle draken if the last known whereabouts of the shield are there we can start with it Pluto, I burned a whole courtyard of Paladin so you could keep that sword. And now it's... you're just going to give it? Oh. Lucretia, is there any way for you to tell us and divine where the scepter is now? This queen of thieves is a cunning foe. I do not know where she hides, only that she is close. Like, like, Drakenheim close? Yes. That... Mm, I 
thought we got her out of the city. I mean, I know that we ran into her the other day, but I just assume that... Oh, man. I mean... She's got her claws in deep in Drakenheim. The least likely place that we would look is her old hideout. So maybe we check her old hideout, mm. which we filled with rats. Okay. I'm pretty sure we um, unleashed an entire army of rats oh. through her whole base. It was Operation Mayhem. Her brigands still stalk the ruins and prey on my pilgrims. Perhaps they still linger about and will know where you can find her. Ah, the old get information. So maybe we thing. can find some of the thieves and uh... I understand that many of them still gather in Emberwood Village. You go back to Emberwood. There. Yeah, we uh, oh, we go God. back to Emberwood Village. Maybe we disguise ourselves as thieves. They won't see it coming. <laughs> like last time. <laughs> no. Didn't we do this already? Knife gun, we, Pete. We 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 <laughs> we, we beat them to within an inch of their life, and then we show them the truth. Ignatius will reveal the truth right they cannot lie in the presence of the sacred flame we could use ignatius and just work our way up the ladder like you know the first guy we beat up is probably going to be like i don't know where she is but so and so might and then we just keep going until we find the queen of thieves and then we finally what do we do talk then? Talk to her <laughs> and get her to switch sides because I, I'm still torn about this whole uh, it being, you know, Katarina. Or we kill her. Um, but probably not. But maybe. I'm not going to say no if I have the chance. Yeah. Well, we are already deep in the city walls. We must decide if we seek the shield beneath the castle or leave to begin our work our way up the rungs of the of the uh the queen of thieves ladder of minions and lackeys okay the castle's still very dangerous yeah i'm feeling I, my vote is for the castle. Yeah. I just drank a bunch of Aqua Expergo. I can feel it rumbling in my tummy. And Lucretia, do you know where in the castle the the shield lies, or is it? Too... Maybe give us an idea of what it looks like. Probably round and shield like. You like don't know sketch? if it's round. You're right. Really actually, a reach. It, it, okay, it, fair. It is a it is a kite shield. Um, the, the I was wrong. Say, say I was wrong. Uh, um, <laughs> Come on, Sebastian. The, Listen, I don't deal with shields very often, Pluto. It is it is a kite shield emblazoned with the sigil of the sacred flame, um, and the um, and it and you you hear hear this in your mind. Ignatius speaks. Vitruvio's shield was always at my side. I will recognize it when I see it. It was close when we were in the castle. Oh. Take us I, to Ignatius. Take it to us, Ignatius. I say this. <laughs> um, I can fly us there. Okay. I mean, faster travel that way. We don't have to walking. walk. Yeah. Um... And Although there I, is that... Good for nothing. No, we, we could do both. We could go to Queen Thieves and go to the castle. And then you keep... And Veo, you're, 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 your dad is holding the scary <gasps> dragon at bay, this right? This is my dad! Oh! We, we might be able to ask you... He kind of has his eyes all over the castle. Yeah. So maybe we ask him okay. if he's seen a shield. And also... 
I am hoping that his control over the situation means that a giant dragon won't come after us when we fly over there. And maybe like a bunch of ratlings. I mean, we might still deal with ratlings, but at this point, ratlings, pff, I, I eat ratlings for breakfast. I do don't. They're, no, I they're, did. I didn't know you did that too. <laughs> no, they're horrible. I've been eating them since, wow. since the beginning. Yeah. Listen, Vale, we're heroes now. Back in the early days when we were jumping into rat's nests and cooking up falling rats on falling into rat's nests and cooking falling. up rats on a stick, those yeah. days are gone. Now are we they? drink wine and we eat feasts. Well, can well, I thanks. also have rats on a stick? Like I can't have both. I mean, you like the more the the more the merrier, you know. You can, but. <laughs> Lucretia, do you see the lengths that we are willing to go? Do you believe in our cause? You... All I see are three who wish to stumble around in the dark, grasping at shadows, chasing... Through, ch stumbling around through the night, chasing shadows and grasping at the darkness, even though... There is a fire here before you in this cold, dark night. The truth is right there before you. The way is lit and still, still you scrape and scrounge. I hope you didn't mean to offend us, but I just want you to know that my entire source of everything I do involves chasing shadows and grasping at darkness. It's kind of my thing. And it need not be that way. <laughs> yeah, okay, but, you know, I when I walk into a church... Usually they're like, oh, hey, welcome. Uh, you know, you seem like if I'm not going to go follow the light that you you have, I don't know, you seem like you're insulting us now, like grasping or crawling around. I don't know. Maybe change that attitude, Lucretia. Maybe, you know, kill it with kindness. Before you is the warmth, the light and the hallowed truth of the sacred flame. Mm -hmm. I am offering you such a kindness, such a warmth to fill your spirits and guard you against a night that seems endless. And you tell me I am not offering you kindness. Mm. I feel it. I feel it, Lucretia. Sebastian feels it too. Thank you, Lucretia. We will go get your shield and get that phylactery from you, and that'll be that. It is always good to see you, Lucretia. It's kind of good. It's okay. We ask for a blessing. Do not, mm. And yeah, be be Stay healthy. Flame be with you. Flame be with you. What they said. May the sacred flame light the way to truth before you. I turn around and I try to usher Sebastian out because he just, I feel like he's trying to pick a fight. <laughs> <laughs> now just and like yep yep <laughs> all right here we go all right oh, there's the door here we go oh. <laughs> the haze it gets to him okay. the one with the higher thread count towel last week and he's just been he's been all bugged up can we can we you don't need to tell everybody about the towel issue like i'm trying to she can see into the future and i thought you could do but it just <laughs> You seem to use Pluto, all of your, your power. I am working on the towel thing. However, I don't necessarily get along with religious figures when they start preaching their crazy religious ideals to me. 
It's just not my jam, and I'm sorry about that. No, don't be sorry. I just feel like Ignatius, he's been in my head for many, many months, and I have begun to see both sides of the sword. There is this balance that we must keep, and it's not as easy as just killing our opponents anymore. We have to find a way to work with them. Mm. Man. And the creature is a powerful ally, even when we ask things of her. So sometimes I miss when I was just hired by the academy to seek out rogue mages and blow them up. <sighs> we gotta be adults and do adult things. I mean, you guys did go in this planning to beat up a religious nerd and take her homework. We yeah, didn't you kind of, do it. See, yeah, you, time, yeah, that I was. We should happen. be really proud of ourselves. That for was a backup plan. <laughs> to, to our initial. Well, at least we got some options, you know. Um, I thought but, you had her there, Veo. I thought you had her. I mean, guys, she's pretty unbreakable spirit, so yeah, I knew there was very, there was going to be something that we had to give. She's, she's very not like for free. Yeah, she's not going to just be swayed. We got it. We got to go. Yeah, it's always like every errands. single person we talk to. It's <laughs> always, oh, if you do this for me, then I'll do this for you. Like, why can't we all just, why can't people just give us everything we want so that we can just. <laughs> no. <laughs> what are, what's wrong with you people? <laughs> why won't you do what I want? Um, you guys ready to go for a quick little flight? Yeah, we're going to go it to. Quick? It's quick, Lake right? Castle. Is it I mean, far? Um, so oh, Sebastian, we can, we can take a look at that, can't we? Yeah, okay, so we're zoomed in way too much there. Okay, so if we're looking at the city here again, right? So you want to get from the crater to Castle Draken itself, not too far, um, probably flying directly over the crater. Um, with the thickness of the haze and the sheets of arcing delirium lightning going across it probably want to skirt mm. the outskirts of the crater <laughs> okay all right um, Puts his um, goggles on <laughs> i i'm gonna cast polymorph on myself and turn myself into a giant eagle uh wearing the goggles still <laughs> okay um and so then you're gonna carry these two yeah and it's like a like it starts with like shadows erupting from me into giant wings and then i turn into a shadow eagle and that's what <laughs> eagles say. Okay. Weird, ah. monstrous eagle. There, that's my eagle sound. Okay, I'm so, riding you. I got a good, I got a good hold. Um, Can you understand us, but we can't understand you? Ah. All right, I think that is a yes. I have Call a, I have a, a yes. I'm proficient Call in animal handling. Now. I technically have speak with animals that I can use. Yeah, I got it. I know when I'm grabbing the wrong feather. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Ow! Tech, uh, um, so a giant eagle, um, a giant eagle is actually a really great creature to polymorph into because it actually, when you adopt the stats, your intelligence is eight, which isn't bad. Your wisdom is 14. Um, and giant eagles do understand common, but can't speak. So e ah. when when you do transform into a giant eagle, you can still like understand people. I lower my wing and let you guys climb on board. Goggles on. So this is uh, so if you're looking at the Bailey of Castle Draken, the actual fortress itself. So there's the palace, there is the chapel, uh, and then there's the lower Bailey, which is like the military wing of the castle. So as you take flight uh, up over the city, right. Um, flying over Drakenheim, you can see that there are still several landmarks that um, poke their way out over the, the mists that choke the city street of the haze itself. So you can see first the ruin of the Academy Tower, shattered in half and floating, but yet still floating in place. The clock tower, and, and uh, you even catch glimpses of, uh, of battle happening on the uh, ramparts of Shepherd's Gate. 
Castle Draken perches upon a high cliff overlooking the entire city. The imposing spires of the palace itself at the highest point of the city. It's many towers bearing down upon like spear uh, pointed, uh, like uh, sharp spear tips. Uh, and so the palace itself, uh, as you recall from your previous adventures, um, there's the main chateau palace, and then there is the royal tower, the conservatory tower, the ambassador's tower, the steward's tower, and the stair tower. So there are sort of five main towers that compose the main castle itself, and then there's the chateau and the throne room as that all radiate out from that. So like, so like, I can't zoom in too much. Actually, I, can, I think I can zoom in quite a bit more. Yeah. So should be able to show. So like, if you're looking at the structure of the palace itself, right? So you have the ambassador's tower, the stair tower, the royal apartment, um, the conservatory tower, uh, the steward's tower, which hangs out here. And then there's the throne room there and then the chateau itself uh, of, of the main parts of Castle Draken. Um, I turn my eagle head to Pluto and Veo on my back and I ask them, Ah! <laughs> Do you want... <laughs> Are you cold? Oh, you and I guess if you, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you look behind me, you would actually see that, right? So Ooh, you, yeah, right? This is our view. Yeah, so... As so, we're uh, flying. So, so, like, there... There is the... the the main, you know, keep, right? And then there's the steward's tower and the the ambassador tower and the stair tower. And then... It's all there. It's all there, yeah, yeah. Right? <laughs> Making use of our great map and our, our great artwork, yeah. <laughs> our crafty artwork. Actually, th this was... When, when we got this art, one of the things that we, we asked for in our art brief of this was that I, I wanted to have the landmarks on the city so that you could actually point to stuff and be like, oh, there it is, right? So, like, stuff like the castle and the academy tower and, <laughs> yeah... And actually, on the map, on the one, the art that's behind you, Joe. Yeah, that's that's it before. So so. <laughs> free meteor. Yeah, free meteor. Yeah. <laughs> it was a simpler time. It prices was. were better. Yep. Um. So which which tower are we? Uh. You want, I mean, I, I know my way around the Stewart's Tower. You, the secret entrance. That's how we got in last time. Veo, what yes. way would you take to get from the surface? down to where your I mean are you ready to see your father uh I would love to see my father thank you <laughs> nice little visit it's been a while we you know didn't get him a holiday gift we'd probably stop by and say hi um <laughs> and last time we went through the steward I think we went steward's tower all the way through into the wine cellar and Ooh. made our way around so I mean same route we did um, you think we'll go talk to my dad first and then oh, we can uh, then figure out if he knows kind of eyes around the castle, give us a better direction. Maybe Ignatius as we're going, will give us a. So, so to, to be clear, you got your intent is to first go down and talk to the steward in the basement of the castle um, or like just, just, just so that I have an understanding of where you guys actually want to go. Yeah, Is he cause... only in the basement? I thought he was like kind of everywhere. It's possible he still may be able to manifest in some way, but I mean, you haven't been back to Castle Draken since all this went down. It's a good scouting mission to see because we're going to be coming back here. Everybody. We should take it slow. Mm -hmm. We find the shield of same for Truvio. I let out another car. Pluto, you specifically here somehow. The cause sounds oddly like I said, what's the worst that could happen? Oh, wow. <laughs> how, how is it resonating? <laughs> There's an inflection in the car. <laughs> you you do that back and I like turn to you and nod. Uh, uh, shenanigans. So I think, yeah, if we make our way down to the basement. The steward's and... tower. To the steward's tower, Eagle Sebastian. Eagle Bastion? Sebeagle. Sebeagle. 
<laughs> okay. So Beagle soars down and uh, towards the uh, the uh, steward's tower. Okay. So you fly towards the the steward's tower itself, um, and the there is there is of course the entrances that that you recall flying into um, previously where you were able to fly right into through through the window into Veo's old bedchamber. <laughs> My room. I remember that. Right. So, um you uh flying towards Castle Dracon itself. You see the as you get closer, there's the stair tower where you see the dragon um Minazorond sleeping upon this tower. And as you fly over the walls of Castle Draken, the guardians do not fly towards you. None wake or animate, none none tremble. Um, you can still see the movements of some other creatures through the courtyard um, in, in the distance of varying sizes. And as you fly in towards the uh, steward's tower, you're able to enter. Uh, you see that it is connected to the stair tower by a, uh, by a bridge, right? Um, and uh, like a sky bridge that connects the between the two towers. Um, and then the stair tower itself then connects again to by another spanning bridge to the main keep. Uh, where the royal uh, the royal apartments are, so the royal tower, and then there's another bridge coming off the stair tower that connects onto the ambassador's tower. So you fly into Veo's old room, um, still the way it was when you last here, but certainly with a lot less panic from the last time you flew this way. <laughs> oh, yeah. As I land on the balcony and you guys get off, I I like step down and transform back into Sebastian. Okay, you are in Veo's old bedroom. Veo, what does it look like? <laughs> um, so there's definitely a lot of uh, toys, like especially like bells, balls, yarn, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, typical things a young uh, cat folk would want as a it's young. Like one wall dedicated as a scratching post. Yeah, there's definitely like scratches <laughs> along areas. And you know, I, I was just like scratching, and my father would tell me not to. And just, but I do it anyways because, you know, it's the nature of things. Rebellious. Um, yes, um, but it's pretty simple. Like it, it's not other than the the toys that I would have. Um, you know, plain walls, plain bed. No, I did. I did not spend much time in the room. I'd rather go explore the city and mm -hmm. get to know the people in the grounds. Yeah, your your chamber itself uh, on this level is connected to several other um, uh, private chambers that were the personal quarters of you and your father when you dwelt here. So um, each of um, each of the the room on this level of the tower, each of the rooms are connected to each other by a set of double doors. There's a, a large fireplace in one of the central chambers, um, and then there's a spiral staircase that runs through the middle of the tower that goes between the various the various levels so from from here um you would want to go down a level to get to where your father's old office was okay let's see if we can make it to to dad okay does, does the castle seem pretty chill right now like <laughs> it, it, it it things are relatively quiet throughout the castle but they'll, you hear a flutter of breeze and a um, that catches upon a loose paper on one of the books on the shelves that that picks up and, and echoes down the hallways. Is the paper like the papers blowing down the hallway? Yeah, the, the the paper flies out the the door towards the staircase where where uh, that leads up and down the 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 levels. Follow Can the I paper? Can I run it and try to grab the piece of paper? Yeah, yeah, you grab it. Um, give me a uh, dexterity check. Uh, 19. Uh, the paper uh, almost tries to pull out of your hand. 
Does it have anything written on it, or is it just a blank piece of paper? Um, it is a page uh, from a storybook uh, that uh, is called uh, a page of a storybook that Vea remembers called um, the uh, the Tale of the Two Curious Kittens. <gasps> Curious kittens. My father used I, to read that to me all the time. I let go of it again. It flutters down the stairwell. I, I start following the paper. Uh, I guess I give chase to Sebastian. <laughs> Chasing paper. To the paper. Uh, I hug a wall first and I say, thanks, Dad. <laughs> and then I run down the stairs. You come down the stairs into this, where, where, where the, the paper rests. Um, at the uh, It comes down the stairs and the stairs open out into a lounge chamber. There's a large fireplace in this chamber, but it's otherwise rather unadorned. Um, there are two doors leading off of this chamber. Of this, uh, um, it's kind of like a wedged shape. Each of the rooms of this tower kind of subdivide the circular tower itself. So all the rooms are somewhat curved and then have like a straight wall that meets at the staircase. The, the paper then rests at the doorway that would lead into Johan's office. Like the last time we were in there, he'd like add a bunch of papers too. So, shall we go in? Uh, is there a reason to knock, or should we just walk in? He. I mean, I ain't be... never used to knock. So. <laughs> I'm going in. <laughs> I okay. push the door. You open the door into what resembles an utterly pristine version of Johan's office. Um, looking out through the windows, the, 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 the sight of the city is slightly distorted and almost a glimmer through the windows makes it look like a bright summer day, um, as the city once was. The office is, consists of a large, a huge mahogany desk with an upholstered chair behind it. And there are just stacks of papers and books everywhere in this room. There are drawers overflowing with paperwork, everything stacked in a way that if you didn't know your father, this would look like an absolute mess. But Veo, with your memory of Johan, you know that he knows where every single piece of paper goes in this room and that he could pluck if you asked him for something he could pluck it out uh almost immediately and there seated at the desk is johann eisner looking as he did in the prime of his life he wears a a um very um formal uh, but a sort of velvet suit with a, a tie and a frill, um, and he has his, his uh, very thinly rimmed but pre precise glasses that sit upon the edge of his nose, and um, as befits a, a, royal, uh, a royal administrator, he has so somewhat of a powdered wig that he would wear that would be tied back in a, in a ponytail, um, be behind his, his head and of course he has um the the telltale sign of like a very immaculate pocket watch that he used to wear and he is sitting at 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 his his desk and he looks up and he smiles and he says feo you know better than to come into my office while i'm working i mean <laughs> guys do you see this too am i hallucinating is that my dad <laughs> hello johan Johan. Sebastian. You again. Pluto. I leap over to him and I give him a big hug. Um, as you leap well, try to. over to him, your your hands pass through him. Oh. Oh, so disappointing. And he says, I am so sorry, Veo. I mean, we can pretend, can't we? Hey, Veo, I have an idea. Just, just, just. Yeah. And I, and I like, I like go and I, I give Veo a hug. While she's like hugging, trying to—I don't know. Oh, I, like I, you I, go I, in in the inside. Yeah, I go, oh. I go in there Johan. and I give you a big hug, and I'm just like, it's okay. It's okay. Maybe one day. Oh, 
Well, it's I, good to I see I you, Papa. <laughs> it's good to see you too, Vale. What? I I I apologize for the display. I since divested of the seals, I have tried to keep my focus on various things, and I find that the trappings of normalcy help me focus. There is power here in the castle that I can utilize, but only so much. It takes everything that I have to do this. Well, I I hope you're staying strong. We're we're moving as fast as we can to try to come and help you. There's um there's a new king that we're helping to bring him to the throne, but before ah. we do that, we have to get the rest of the seals. Yes, Wilhelm. I met Wilhelm. him. You've yes. met him. Where did you meet him? Did he come to the castle? Wow. He did. It's he did something very great for me and for all of us without you even knowing it. He came to the castle through the land of dreams to help someone that had wandered here looking for Do you remember when you summoned a unicorn, Sebastian? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that unicorn saved the day. Oh, well, man. that was great. So yeah, random. well, it was trapped in the castle uh, in another realm oh, of existence my. afterwards. It wasn't what? just a fake unicorn? It was no, real? I sent him back. He no, said goodbye. There's much to tell, but the long and short of it is that the unicorn that you summoned got trapped in Castle Draken, and a group of druids got worried about him because they were his friend. They went looking for the druids, and then through a whole bunch of series of other events, so Wilhelm got messed, tangled up with these druids and came looking for the druids who, came, who were looking for the unicorn who found us all here together here and the long and short of it is the rift is not sealed it is held shut but not sealed completely and he helped I, you with this he did he did wow. he helped us he helped me along with the druids and the unicorn to keep it closed for a little while longer. And his his companion, uh, a wizard of the Amethyst Academy, a mage, I believe, had some power in it as well. It's made it easier since then, so I've been able to, to do some things and go through my old paperwork and my old documents, and but it's been hard. I'm, I'm glad you've at least had some reprieve of having to focus so immensely on keeping the door closed that's i owe him a lot for helping you yes everything they told me in school about the way summoning creatures works does not account for a lost unicorn in the dream world i'm not a mage i can't understand it i don't try yeah Just go with it it's All probably a delirium thing all I know oh, is what I feel. Conne I'm connected to the castle and everything that is here. And so it is like an extension of my body, the way I feel the troubles of it. The aches and pains of the castle are my own aches and pains now. And I already was getting a fair enough aches and pains before all this happened. So if I hug the castle, I hug you. Metaphorically speaking. <laughs> Um, well, I mean, we haven't come here to, to, to help you yet. It's, we're on our way and we're going to bring Wilhelm, but first of all, we need to find something that's hidden here in the castle in order to get us mm. closer to coming back again. What are you looking for? Uh, there's a shield of St. Vitruvio. Oh, that. Oh, that doesn't sound good. What do you mean That. Do you know uh, of it? Y yes, yes. O originally, the shield of Saint Vitruvio was kept in the um, in the chapel, actually, of the castle. Um, but it wasn't too long ago. Of course, the chapel here in the castle was never actually completed. Uh, there was a whole set of the catacombs that were under construction that were meant to replace the catacombs that are under the castle proper because those were built ages and ages ago 
But, well, before, before the meteor struck, I had tried to finish the construction, but of course, his majesty, the former king, uh, wanted to closely meditate on the shield of St. Vitruvio in his personal chambers. Uh, in other words, he thought it would make a nice decoration for his mantle place. Hmm. It's in the royal apartments. Oh, that's fine. That's just a few flights of stairs away. Oh, that was before the meteor hit? Who knows where it is now unless it stayed there. I believe it's still there. It's just that there's many monsters and creatures that are still up there as well. Oh. With your power over the defenses, have you not been cleaning out the castle? I've been doing my best, but I saw it best. But for the time being, I have also tried to just keep myself and everything safe here. So I have used my power to keep the castle doors shut tightly. Mm -hmm. Most of my attention was on the Bailey, and of course, I haven't made as much progress as I'd hoped to because of this whole matter with the Rift. Yeah, Sebastian, he's been doing his best, okay? Okay. Um, nothing that we can't handle. Like, what are we talking? Rattlings? I know that there were some rattlings in here last time we were here. Um, well, there were some demons that, um, that had taken up in the royal apartments mm. quite some time ago, and they're still there. Like se demons? Demons are Several my speciality. Demons? Yes. Demons. Like lesser demons? Regular demons? No, he's very large. And there's more than... And he's got several friends. He's a very awful fellow. I've tried to talk with him a few times, actually. What's he doesn't name? happen to be um, really big and bloated and have horns and ask people for their souls all the time. We're not talking that demon, are we? Uh, I believe he might be interested in these kind of things. Okay, but like really big and really like guys, he, are we talking? He's really big. Yes, he's he's very large. He's taken to calling himself the Regent. The Regent. This can't be the same. Guys, this can't be this this can't be. It can't be. Um, other than the regent, he doesn't go by any other name. Papa. I'm sure this demon has some sort of other identity, but that's all he, that's what he t told me when I tried to speak with him. He's very, very angry and enjoys eating his own friends. Don't we all? Oh. Unless our friends are fish people. And no! Oh, especially if our friends are fish people. Mm -hmm. So we must he, bargain with the region. Yes, he is taken up in Ulrich's old apartment. I mean, guys, we fought... There was that giant demon monster that we fought in the courtyard the last time we were here. Surely that was bigger than this. Much, it is not yes. about, it's 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 not about the size. It it Ignatius will will see it through. We will rid this place of this demonic presence. We will take back the shield of Saint Vitruvio. And then we'll probably have some muffins or something. I don't know, Veo, what do you got? Muffins, cookies, maybe some yeah. banana bread. Yep. Yes, there there are other fiendish Hi. creatures too that dwell in this in the ambassador's tower too. I would steer clear of that. I've managed to seal all the towers. I will allow you to open the doors of the castle, but none else. Okay. Simple. Carve our way through an army of demons, kill the regent, get muffins and the shield. Easy. And when 
when we come back and we come to the front gates, well, I'm sure it won't just be us. Yes, absolutely. You can get to the stair tower from here. So you can get from my tower down and through up to the royal apartments. Thank you, Johan. Yes. I'll do my best to keep an eye on things. And if it looks like you're in trouble, I can close and seal the doors if needed. But that's the best I'll be able to do for you. I hope you'll be okay. We'll be fine. Alrighty. I hope so. Well, that is where we will need to end for the night, then. Um, For I was not anticipating it to go this far. (laughs) And I need to upload all the maps of Castle Dragon. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and I got some work ahead of me. I was not anticipating it going that way. Um, so uh, my apologies for again for the the shorter episode this this evening. We had those technical difficulties, but we do have to end at ten still. Unfortunately, with the the adjusted time, it's quite late for us. But we will pick things up next week and see how Ooh. how Draken Force handles Castle Draken. I guess you you could also think of it as cover uh, as clearing up the castle, which you had to do anyways. So. <laughs> just coming back to clean up the yep. mess that we left <laughs> yep. yep a big thank you as always to our amazing cast kelly jill and joe and thanks for to all of you who watched this episode live and, uh, and thank you patient through our technical issues and a uh, big thank you to kyle for all of his work behind the scenes and um during our technical difficulties i got to hear his beautiful voice and it brought me so much joy. Uh, so thank you, Kyle. And um, also a big thank you to our Dungeon Master, Monty Martin, um, for running such a wonderful game and also dealing with the uh, terrible internet demons that he smashed with delirium and got rid of eventually. So thank you for doing that and giving us a great game tonight. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, um, we... Uh, uh, how... Who else we got to thank? This well, we, we have to thank uh, some of our incredible, uh, talented artists. We use a variety of incredible assets produced by them, and we use them in our live stream games, and you can enjoy them too. So please check out and support some of these amazing creators. We use our virtual tabletop with Roll20. Um, you have some, you've seen some amazing artwork from the book. Yes, we had a bunch of questions in chat asking, what program did you use to make these maps? These were made in the program. That map of Drakenheim was by the amazing John Stevenson. Uh, who was commissioned to do the map of Drakenheim and um, uh, the other um, and many of the other maps in our book were designed in dungeon draft but then uh, the amazing Josh O uh, our cartographer did another layer of artistry on top of those as well and if you are interested in these maps they're in the book (laughs) Uh, and so there's actually a whole digital map pack that comes with the pdf of the book uh, that you can download and use and put into your vtt of choice yeah, so please check them out uh, and support not only some of these amazing creators, but the Kickstarter as well. And of course, don't forget to look at the links below for our Teespring store where you can find all of your favorite Dungeon Dudes shirts, including Shadows of Drakenheim, which comes in a sweater and a poster, but also Yes, 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 Troll Killer, uh, Dusk Wardens, etc. So check out bit, bit.ly slash Dungeon Dudes merch. Our videos and live streams are made possible thanks to the incredible generosity of our Patreon supporters. So if you enjoy the work that we do here on YouTube, Twitch, and elsewhere, be sure to check us out at patreon.com slash dungeon underscore dudes. We also have a phenomenal Discord community exclusive to our patrons. So if you are joining us on Patreon, make sure to hop onto our Discord where you can chat with us about all things Drakenheim, all things D&D. You can also take part in our monthly writer's rooms where you can help Monty and I with new scripts coming up for new episodes and join in on our monthly Q&As where we, um, we either do Q&As or now we're starting to get into uh, workshops where Monty and I look at the homebrew material material submitted by our patreon community so if you join us on patreon that is a great way for us to maybe take a glance at some of the stuff you're creating and give our feedback and some cool pointers and kind of workshop it with you yeah that's coming this thursday actually yeah yeah this uh this coming thursday we're doing um feats feats Feats. wow yeah yeah oh Um, that'd be fun so yeah check us out on discord awesome 
Thank you all so much for watching, and we will see you next time in when we find out the fate of Drakenheim. <laughs>